About a year ago, I posted a video that showed a circuit that could take a composite NTSC video signal, like this one here, and convert it into X, Y, and Z signals to drive uh, an oscilloscope and turn the scope into essentially a video monitor, like we're looking at here. And it turned out to be a really popular video. There's nothing really unique about it. It's something that uh, has been shown many times on the internet. And, uh, but it just turned out to be really popular for uh, you know, people watching it. Even got posted on Hackaday's website, which was a, a first for me, so that was pretty cool. So um, I wanted to revisit that a little bit, because uh, I made some improvements to the circuit recently. This is the original circuit that I showed. Uh, we're not going to go into the detail on this. But I had so much fun with it that I took that circuit off of my breadboard and actually built a little soldered uh, board with it. So I had something more permanent to play with. And I made some changes when I did that. You can see some of my penciled notes here. And uh, so the circuit that I actually, I think, posted a link to on that video was this one here, which had some of those improvements. Uh, so there's a link to this on that previous video. And I'll link uh, that down below this video in the notes. Uh, but there were some improvements that I can go beyond this. Because what I found was the circuit worked really well on this scope, this old Tech 485. But it didn't work real well on some of the other scopes I have, like this, uh, this 2465. And uh, really a lot of the problems came down to what's going on here and how we drive the Z-axis input. Because every scopes, you know, different models of scopes have different requirements in terms of what the voltages have to be on the Z-input to properly control the brightness of the trace. And uh, this didn't give you a lot of adjustment. It basically just gave you an adjustment of gain, no adjustment for offset. And also the AC coupling in this path also created some issues too with smearing and that kind of thing. So there was definitely definitely some improvements that could be made in this area. Okay. So um, what I wound up doing is making these improvements here. Okay. So we'll, we'll cover the z-axis here first and the improvements that I made, and then I'll go through and describe what the rest of the circuit's doing. And that's basically still the same uh, as the previous video. So I got our composite video coming in here. We'll, again, we'll talk about the X and Y in a moment. But just for the Z axis, we come in essentially DC coupled to a pot, and then what I can do is tap off, you know, basically adjust gain of the overall circuit by adjusting where that pot is adjusted. And that's going into a simple inverting amplifier of a, a gain, overall gain of a little bit less than, or a little bit more than minus two. Okay. So I, I can adjust essentially the contrast. Okay, because I'm adjusting the you know, the height of the signal, the peak-to-peak -peak value of the signal, which is going to adjust essentially our contrast, light-to-dark ratio, on the z-axis input. Okay. But then also, uh, we want to adjust the DC offset to properly center that signal within kind of the z-axis control range uh, for the scope input. Okay. Uh, so in order to adjust that, I basically just have a simple resistor divider here uh, that's just adjusting the virtual ground for this amplifier by adjusting this pot. Now, I really could have just connected this pot directly up here, but since I had the dual op amp, I figured I'd just use the other one as a uh, unity gain buffer. So in effect, this is a contrast and brightness adjustment. And to see how this works, let's take a look over here on the scope. So this is the input signal that's coming from the video camera. Okay, if I add channel 1, we can see that this circuit, or this signal up here, is just the inversion of that. I basically take this signal and flipped it over. Okay, and uh, so that accomplishes the first thing that we needed because most of these scopes, the um, the z-axis input is inverting. I mean, the more positive you take the z input voltage, the dimmer the trace gets. So um, the video signal works just the opposite way. And the original video signal, you know, black is right about here, and then bright white is up here. Okay, we really needed to go the opposite way. We want uh, the brightest thing to be the most negative signal. So that's why we do the inversion. And then, uh, and then we also want to be able to adjust essentially the gain of that. That will adjust the, the ratio from black to white. Okay, that's our contrast. And then adjust the offset would essentially be the brightness. So this circuit uh, basically accomplishes both of those things with these two pots. Okay. In fact, if we look over at the scope here, okay, if I reach over and grab the, uh, the offset control and kind of see how we adjust the offset up or down. Okay. And if I, you can also see on the video, how that's adjusting the brightness of the screen. 
just by adjusting the offset. So now I essentially have a brightness control, and the other one is kind of the uh, the contrast control. I'm gonna I've got the contrast kind of where I like it, so I'm not gonna mess with that one. But that basically just adjusts the magnitude of this signal. Okay, so those are the improvements that were made on the z-axis input. Okay, on the uh, x and y, uh, one of the things that I did is I uh, I found that the original circuit um, basically created a negative going ramp voltage for the X and the Y inputs. Okay, and uh, the negative going ramp works well for you know any of the scopes because we, for a video signal, we typically scan from the top down to the bottom. So to create the ramp voltage that that basically scans from top to bottom, a negative going ramp is what we want. However, the um, we also want to scan horizontally left to right, which would require a positive going ramp. Okay and the original circuit generated a negative going ramp. So the way we dealt with that and the circuit is to simply invert it. Okay, and that's what this circuit is here. We're basically just taking that negative going ramp, buffering it with an emitter follower, and then AC coupling into this inverting buffer, okay, to create a positive going ramp. Okay, so that's how we get our X and Y. The ramps themselves are generated with this circuit here. Okay, basically what we're doing is setting up uh, these two transistors with a constant, constant bias on the base, fixed resistors in the emitters, which basically makes these two things current sources. These current sources basically draw down on these two capacitors. So a constant current into or out of a capacitor causes a linear ramp of voltage. Okay, And that would increase indefinitely, but what we have is a couple of transistors, we kind of call them reset transistors, that whenever we get the negative going horizontal and vertical sync pulses out of the sync separator, those transistors turn on, short out the cap, and bring the voltage back up towards the positive supply again. So, uh, so that's kind of how they, we generate those signals. The video signal comes in here. The sync separator circuit generates a um, horizontal sync and a vertical sync pulse. Those pulses will re reset these two transistors, okay, or turn those on, resetting these voltage back to positive. As soon as those pul sync pulses go away, the ramps kind of come down. This one got it, winds up going up. That creates essentially our scan voltages to create the raster on the screen. And then we're driving the z-axis input at the same time to adjust the intensity. So that's how we get uh, video on the scope screen, and, uh, and it all works hunky-dory. So with these improvements here, we can drive a larger variety of oscilloscopes. And one of the changes that I made uh, it was just more of a mistake on my part from the previous video, uh, previous uh, circuit, is these base resistors I had set way too low. I'd picked the wrong values out of the box type of thing, and so I increased those to 6.8K. Uh, value is not really critical, but I had some lower values in here which were just drawing too much current um, out of the bases of these transistors. So, so those are the only real changes that I made from that standpoint. But, uh, but this whole circuit now is built up on this little breadboard, and uh, and works really well and uh, it's just a lot of fun to uh, play around with the old analog scopes. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, got some information out of it. I will also post a link in the show no uh, video notes uh, to a scan of this schematic in case you want to go duplicate it yourself. There's nothing real critical about it. Uh, the transistors can all just be general purpose PNP and NPNs, kind of like you know 2N3904, 3906 combinations or uh, 2N2222s or, and 2N2907s, they'll all work fine, but just about any general purpose um, you know, transistors will work in that case. These are just two small signal diodes, one in 4148s or one in 914As, something like that. And then this op amp, the op amp does have to be a pretty fast op amp, a reasonably fast op amp, uh, you know, at least a couple of megahertz uh, bandwidth, a little bit more. This happens to be an 80 megahertz wide. Also, the op amp has to uh, ideally be um, rail to rail, or at least um, include the negative rail, the ground. Okay, It'd be ground sensing, who's out, and the output can swing to ground. Um, that, that's probably the most important thing. This happens to be a nice rail to rail op amp. This analog device is AD8032, is the one that I used here. I just happen to have some samples of here in my box, and it worked out just perfectly. But uh, an older op amp, like an old 741 or an LM358, is probably not going to be fast enough. I haven't played with it, but, um, but you're better off with a, uh, a faster op amp for doing that uh, video amplification. So, Anyway, I thought you might enjoy that and uh, a revisit of the old uh, oscilloscope video monitor uh, circuit.
and some improvements that I made to that. Again, any questions or comments are always welcome, and thanks for watching.